Okay, we're back here live in um, Oracle Open World. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and I'm joined here with Dave Vellante for our wrap up for Oracle Open World. Dave, this is, this is day three of live coverage of Oracle Open World. Um, great event, amazing interviews of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We saw America's Cup uh, victory, unbelievable by Larry Ellison. I mean, what a, what a turn of events. Um, actually, probably one of the better Oracle Open Worlds I've been to in four years, all the lead up, Great uh, crowd, and all of a sudden, it's just, what a turn. Larry Ellison doesn't show up for the event, for the keynote. <laughs> they winning all the comeback, and then they finally win the America's Cup. So, what a lot of action, Dave. A lot of action, we're on the ground. We've interviewed a lot of the, t the tech athletes here, as well as the America's Cup. What's your take? Well, you know, the, the Oracle Open World was kind of a sideshow this year, John, with a sideshow for the America's Cup, right? And uh, first Open World I've ever been to where uh, Larry didn't, give his you know, amazing midweek keynote. His, uh, his early week keynote is always uh, you know, a little dry, but at any rate, you know, some of my takeaways, John, some of the things I'll remember uh, from this event, obviously 12C, the DBAs we heard are absolutely loving you know, 12C, the multi-tenant capabilities of that. I think there's more cloud to come. Uh, the whole in-memory piece, uh, Mark Hurd basically poo-poo's Hannah. You can't even compare Hannah to, to uh, our in-memory option. All, with our in-memory option, you flick a switch. So those wars, you know, they've begun in earnest. Um, I think the whole notion of engineered systems, is Sun better off? You know, you and I wrote that article, is Sun better off, or Oracle better off after the Sun acquisition? Um, we heard from Elizabeth earlier today, he said, not yet. Uh, Oracle has said it's the most profitable acquisition ever. I think ultimately it's going to pan out very, very well for Oracle. You know, human capital management, still loving Workday, although we heard again from Elizabeth, the truth is somewhere in between what Workday is saying and what Oracle is saying, whole customer experience, experience thing. Oracle in the cloud, David Floyer, I was talking to him this morning, he's very impressed with the comprehensive nature of Oracle's cloud offering. And the other thing, John, is Oracle seems to have impeccable timing of when it, when it weaves and bobs with regard to its ecosystem. In the last several years, uh, Oracle's been very aggressive with what used to be a lot of its infrastructure partners. Um, guys like EMC and NetApp and, uh, and other server vendors, uh, be they Dell or whomever. And I think Larry's absence this year, mid-week, mid is actually, you know, ironically, kind of, kind of, I don't know if it's by design, but it works out well for Oracle in that it allows the ecosystem to be you know, part of the news. It's a good feeling here. Oh, it, oh, Oracle's great, we love this. It was a lot of business opportunities. So it's almost like Oracle's just sucking in the ecosystem. Yeah, keep helping us, keep helping us, keep helping us while we buy time to become best of breed and then we're going to eat you alive. I mean, I think, I honestly believe that's, that's part of the Machiavellian strategy of Oracle. I mean, Oracle, I mean, almost as a sigh of relief, Dave. Larry's not here. It's like the actual workers get to do their job without it being, you know, watched. Larry's too busy drinking champagne on the boat. Everyone's actually doing their job for once, and that's all, all fun. I got to say, the ecosystem message here has been vibrant. It used to be kind of quiet, right? Four years ago, it was like packed with all these big names, all the big industry partners, and it was almost like they were all walking on eggshells, Dave. It was really quiet and almost like scared. EMC also, this is the year before Exadata came out. Again, huge. They knew it was coming down. Oracle was retooling. Now, four years into it, Oracle's looking strong. I got to say, the ecosystem partners are doing well, a nice balance. Again, but there's some Machiavellian concepts out there that you're talking around, yeah. I agree with, but I think ultimately they're better off and it's improving. You know, Jim Harbaugh says you're either getting better or you're getting worse. I think Oracle is getting better, they're not getting worse. And that's you know, ultimately a good thing for everybody. You know, the other thing too is, uh, I think Larry is, what, 67, 68 years old? So at some point, Larry Ellison's not going to be here anymore. I think he's still got a ways to go. You know, another three, four, five, seven years, who knows? I mean, Larry's in good shape and, you know, mentally is, is clearly all there, at least for the most part. <laughs> um, and so, he's, you know, he's, he's engaged, put it that way. A guy's obviously incredibly sharp and, you know, still driving this company. But, my point is, you start to get a flavor of what it might be like when, you know, Larry hands the baton over. Um, Joe Tucci, we saw the avuncular uh, ch chairman and CEO of, of EMC, who's someone else who's probably going to pass the, the, the baton this decade. So you're seeing a, a generation of great CEOs you know, put their stamp on their legacy and sort of winding down their, their franchises or handing it off, not winding down, but winding down their tenure, handing it off potentially to, to some others. Not that that's a signal by Larry, but you kind of get a flavor of what open world might be like, what Oracle might be like without Larry Ellison. 
And I think ultimately my, my takeaway is obviously um, big data, cloud, mobile, and social, big part of it, the definitions, again, Social media is driving it, a lot of social CRM kind of things, SRM, social relational management going on. Uh, you're seeing human capital. I think the threat of workday is causing Oracle to take notice. And also you got people here like Red Hat, you got uh, competitors like SAP, you got VMware out there. I mean, Oracle was going to be a force. I think ultimately they're getting better. And I think everyone realizes that, you know what, Oracle can coexist. It's not an Oracle winner-take-all market. I think they're realizing that there's a place for them and it's still billions and billions of dollars in revenue. Interesting to hear from the analysts this morning about some of the financials and they got some work to do. And, you know, but Larry's going to continually pump up the market. He's going to be outrageous on his keynotes. Uh, but ultimately, big data, big content, big networks, big convergence. That's what the story is here. And under the hood, Oracle is trying to reinvent themselves to be relevant. Because if they don't, they'll lose more share. But I think ultimately they're going to still maintain a big part of the market share in their business and business software. And I think the opportunity in the enterprise is going to be, is going to be for startups, right? I think Oracle, EMC, uh, and the big companies are going to be buying up these startups. And again, enterprise is one of the hottest sectors right now. And I was talking to Jerry Chen at Greylock just a while ago, a couple weeks ago, and you look at what Greylock's doing from an investment standpoint of venture capitals in, in Silicon Valley, they're absolutely investing in the enterprise. All the top VCs are building out their enterprise practice, Dave. You know, it's great, it's in our wheelhouse. You know, four years ago, the enterprise, no one wanted to talk about it. You know, we were in the enterprise, we cover the enterprise. Um, you're the, one of the top analysts in the enterprise. The enterprise is hot, and the enterprise is where the action is, because without work, without business, consumers can't buy more big screen TVs and more cell phones and more mobile phones. So the consumerization of business, big data, social is driving the trend, and that ultimately is going to create a new generation of wealth. I've always said it, the new software paradigm, the new computer scientists coming out, Dave, are programming in a new style. This is a new generation. It's very much a PC-like inflection point. Back when I was growing up, the PC industry created massive change. This generation with the mobile, internet generation is creating massive software opportunities. You heard the CTO from VC saying, what, three terabytes of a heap of RAM for a programmer to have available. When I programmed in college, they had 64K of RAM. Three terabyte heap, that's not even direct access memory. So you got persistent flash, you got new storage tiering, huge under the covers, under the hood capabilities in the infrastructure that's going to be a massive boon in the enterprise. Yeah, we heard Mark Hurd talk of the, about the fact that uh, the average age of, of the, the enterprise application, legacy applications, is 19 years. Um, and he said that in the context of, you know, customers have challenges, they got to get from point A to point B without disrupting those legacy apps. That is Oracle's ace in the hole. That's where the inertia is, that's where the lock-in is, that's where the advantage is for Oracle. And so they can, that very fact allows Oracle to buy time. The fact that Oracle spends, uh, and focused spending on R&D allows them throughout their stack, their end-to-end -end strategy, to, to invest and try to getting to best of breed. That's the, my two big questions are, can, can Oracle get to best of breed at each of the component levels of the stack? And secondly, can it appeal to those you know, 60,000 attendees here, 30,000 are probably from companies that Oracle acquired. Eloqua, Taleo, right now, PeopleSoft, JD Edwards, et cetera, you know, PeopleSoft acquired JD Edwards, but and the like, that Oracle has brought in Acme Packet and so forth. Can Oracle appeal as an innovator to that crowd, can it maintain those individuals? And I think the way Oracle does that is it brings out function, it spends money on R&D, it markets like crazy, very aggressively to customers. It, as I said before, it ticks the box on all the features and functions that people want. It does listen to its customers. Uh, we saw today some you know, customer experience activity going on, some discussions there. They're just in every single market. Thomas Curian claims they're, they're, they're a market leader in 92 particular product segments. You know, I don't know, it depends on how you define leadership, uh, but there's no doubt that you know, by Jack Welch, Welch's measure of leadership, number one and number two, Oracle's there in probably 90 plus segments. So, so I think that you know, I'm actually confident that Oracle's model is working and will continue to work. Um, as much as I complain about Oracle, as much as I try to help customers negotiate better, better pricing and the like, I think that um, you know, at the end of the day, John, it's all about what business value you can deliver. So, I want to get your take, John. Um, again, you got the Silicon Valley perspective, you got the old guard, Silicon Valley, Oracle, you got the new startups, you're tight with a lot of those guys, you know a zillion VCs. What's your take on all this? 
My take in Silicon Valley right now is, and, and is, is Silicon Valley is expanding beyond Silicon Valley. A couple of key news items this week that were interesting is the whole general solicitation of investments. The whole VC industry is under siege, and there's a lot of posts out there. Ohm Malik wrote a post from Giga Ohm. Um, everyone's proposing, oh, it's a massive change, sea change. Here's the deal. At the end of the day, the VC business is not going away. The best deal is going to be done by the best investors. The private markets will stay private. No one's going to open up the kimono on the VC side. If you're a good VC, you're going to get the best deals. The not so good deal is going to be open to the general public. So I think you're going to see a lot of you know, crappier deals being funded from the general solicitation of the market. And then I think the big upside for all the angel list and these alternative financing is, is more access to capital for emerging categories. I mean, we were just joking the other day, medical marijuana is going to start to see funding from the VCs. You know, I mean, I'm not, not kidding, all, all kidding aside, that oh, is a viable. It was a story on 60 Minutes that's a, recently. That's I, a I viable mean, and, op and it's option. A booming porn, business. Porn, um, you know, these are industries that aren't VC backed but are lucrative. So you're going to start to see investment criteria come into those and get VC backed like funding. You see vertical markets really get hot. I think the big upside to the whole capital markets transition uh, is the democratization of capital. They're the impact in the vertical markets these niche markets that are exploding categories. The traditional tech companies, the big deals, the next Pinterest, the next Twitter, that these things are all going to come from the big VCs and that's where the action's going to be. So developers will still go to, and entrepreneurs will still go to the top tier guys for the big money, for scale. It's just at the lower end and the, at the entry level of the capital, you're going to see these angel networks kick in. So that's one point. The other point is the constant focus on the enterprise. In Silicon Valley and beyond, in New York and Europe, and in Asia, Asia Pacific, including India, the enterprise market is absolutely on fire. Massive growth is just the beginning. But the problem, Dave, is that you know, is that as we know, it's hard to do that. You can't just come out, of, come out of college and build an enterprise company by accident. Consumer side, you can do that, but you can't do that on the enterprise. You need expertise. You need to be like a Gary Bloom. You need to be like a D-Raj at Nutanix. You got to be, you got to have some experience. Being young doesn't mean you're going to be successful in the enterprise. You may get lucky, and there might be some good karma there if you get the right investors, but ultimately it's an experience game, and I think what's going to be interesting about the enterprise, Dave, is the experience will matter. So I'm watching Box, I'm watching Dropbox, I'm not sure they have the experience to pull it off um, at, in the DNA of the company, being a consumer company. So, you know, my, I'm watching them. If they get the right mentoring, the right investors, which they do have, then it's a whole different ball game. I want to talk about a couple other things that we got going on in uh, SiliconANGLE Wikibon. So we're doing a lot of work, as you know, in, in big data. Jeff Kelly just released a, a recent survey on big data adoption. Uh, we're going to be adding and enhancing to that. Uh, we've been doing a ton of stuff you know, leading up to Oracle Open World on best practices for Oracle practitioners, how they can optimize their infrastructure, uh, virtualization adoption within, within Oracle. Um, and then, of course, in SiliconANGLE, siliconangle.com, you got all the news. So check out siliconangle.com, check out wikibon.org, go to youtube.com slash siliconangle. What you'll see is a bunch of playlists, you'll see the playlist from Oracle Open World, and then John, we've got Splunk, Splunk's .conf conference is coming up next week. Splunk is the master at machine data, they ingest machine data, they make sense out of log data, uh, they help IT people they really deal with the problems that they're having and try to figure out and diagnose some of those challenges. They got a huge you know, following fan base, uh, and, and so, so check that out. Um, and then uh, in October, end of October, we're going to be down at Hadoop World, the Big Data NYC. We're going to be we're going to be using that hashtag. The Cube is going to be down there. We got tons of guests uh, uh, that week. We hope we'll be at IOD again. We were at IOD last year, November fourth, um, and then uh, reInvent in in uh, November, the week of November twelfth. Amazon AWS reInvent. We were at the AWS Summit in June. So check out our coverage of, of Amazon's reInvent conference on November 12th, and finally we're going to be in HP Discover in Barcelona December 12th uh, for several days coverage. That's going to be another great show, John. Um, <clears throat> of course, we're here inside the QLogic booth, right? Yeah. Every year, QLogic is so generous, they give us a, a major part of their booth, so shout out to QLogic. We, we would not be here without the sponsorship yeah. of, of QLogic and some others, John. Yeah, I mean, it's been very important to us to, to recognize the sponsors that help us get to the events to check the ceiling from the noise. Uh, QLogic is our fourth year with QLogic. We'll be back next year, he's got the word from the QLogic team. Bigger, bigger and better booth. You know, it's, it's a tradition, we stay with the people who brought us, as they say, you dance with the ones who bring you to the dance floor. And that's QLogic, I want to thank QLogic. Uh, long time support of the Q from day one. EMC, EMC from day one, we were born at EMC World 2010. 
EMC really, really stepped up and has continued to be a great supporter of theCUBE. Um, BRS, back up and recovery, another great uh, support from EMC. Um, Attuni is a big sponsor, SanDisk, Accenture, I mean, a lot of great names, Dave. Yeah, SanDisk and Accenture, I was very excited, you know, uh, uh, that, that they, they provided support. Uh, they've been in the Cube before, at least Accenture has. SanDisk had never, to my knowledge, been on the Cube, so we were really grateful for them. Again, making this coverage possible, so why? So we can, we can deliver free research to practitioners, that we can, we can deliver all this, this video to our audience, no paywalls. Uh, um, uh, you know, no issues going to the news site. It's all there, it's free, it's open source, and uh, we're glad you enjoy it. I also want to thank Oracle for having Oracle Open World, and again, the, the Oracle Open World coverage of theCUBE, as we said earlier, as kind of a, as a, as a, as a joke is true, we love Oracle Open World, and I uh, want to thank everyone for watching. I want to thank the team here, doing a great job as usual, SiliconANGLE, Wikibon teams, all shout out, the team's getting so big now, it's too long a list to, to mention, but uh, again, watch us this year, we've got a lot more good events, Amazon uh, conference, we're going to have a big stage at Amazon reInvent, the big premier developer and customer conference, Amazon is changing the game. We're going to be at HP uh, Barcelona, as Dave mentioned. We're also going to be uh, a lot of great places. Next week is going to be Splunk Conference, Dot Conference in Vegas. Stay tuned, watch SiliconANGLE TV and wikimon.org and siliconangle.com. Stay with us for those on events. This is a wrap up from Oracle Open World. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. That's a wrap here. We'll see you next time on theCUBE.